Ransomware, the enemy within. I'm Jason Maynard. I'm a senior technical solutions architect focusing on cybersecurity for Cisco systems. Ransomware is lurking and has become a major threat to organization. Embedding itself in email, traveling on a USB stick, poking its ugly head through a vulnerable system, and moving from system to system to system. The game is on. And as we continue to add defenses, ransomware seems to find a way in. And as it continues to lurk and move around, we have to have detection capabilities and visibility in order to mitigate our risk and exposure. So we'll talk a little bit about ransomware in 2021. We'll talk about ransomware defense concepts and then Cisco's ransomware defense packaging. Some really cool stuff that we put together. And then we'll talk a little bit at the end around some tips and tricks around um, some content that you can access and get your hands on and know more. So let's get started. We've got 25 minutes and this is going to be action packed. So ransomware in 2021. So it continues to evolve and be disruptive. We've seen this again this year. It's no uh, small feat. The numbers are real and visibility is key. We need to understand what's happening. We don't want to be shutting down pipelines because the risk is real of the potential of moving into an operational environment. It may not be able to, but we're unsure. We're not confident. The visibility isn't there. We want to reduce the time to detect, right? This becomes critical and we've been saying this for years, but it's certainly critical as ransomware starts causing havoc within the organization. And then ultimately we'll want to limit and lessen the impact. So how do we do that? Well, we need to segment the environment. We need to be able to cut off malware as it starts to move within the organization. Maybe a click of a button. So we know malware now is the number one cause of downtime. And downtime for over 24 hours, ransomware is the top cause. Actors are increasingly well-funded, patient and persistent, and 86% of breaches were financially motivated. We're seeing sophistication and malware to take a get, a, a advantage of large decentralized environments. Think of COVID, the pandemic, the hybrid workforce. 42% of companies report suffering from cybersecurity fatigue. The defenders are tired. We need to help. So Talos incident response de determined these top weaknesses, and that's phishing. Again, we know that phishing is big. Humans are a core piece of the defensive posture. We need to ensure that we're educating them. Lack of visibility and detection, we've already called that out. Lack of forensics. So for example, if you're at a coffee shop and you connect to a website and you go to a domain and you get popped at the coffee shop and then you move into the network and move laterally and then your forensics starts collecting data, you're missing a piece of the puzzle. We need to be comprehensive in, in the, the logging and the data that we're receiving. And then a, a lack of multi-factor authentication. If they get credentials, we don't want them to be able to log in without another level of authentication that takes place. So ransomware defense concepts, cyber insurance. It's not ransomware defense. It's important, but if a hospital gets ransomware and a patient is not treated, they may die. Insurance only pays if you're a, are compliant. In order to be compliant, you have to have the right maturity in place when it comes to security. Think of a home. A home has doors and locks and all of these, uh, maybe alarm system, and your insurance may get cheaper because you have these controls, but the controls are required, at least the basics, right? The alarm system is a, a, a maybe an advanced capability showing some level of maturity. But if your house gets broken into, insurance doesn't ensure that that doesn't happen. And if they steal something that's sentimental, that's gone forever. You can't replace it. And same thing with an organization that gets compromised. Your brand might get jeopardized even if you bring systems back online. So insurance is important, but the controls are more important in the sense of protecting your business and ensuring you don't get compromised or minimizing that, that risk. 
And so backups become obviously a staple in this. They're, they're certainly a last line of defense. You don't want to get ransomware. So don't, don't think about just going out there and backing up everything and saying, okay, well, if we get it, we get it. We're going to restore. It helps with avoiding to pay ransom. That's for sure. And it helps with recovery ultimately. But the problem is, is the adversary knows this too. And why not start embedding? And I think we've seen this, right? Start embedding um, some of this um, uh, mess inside of your backup. So when you restore it, we see continual reoccurrence of infection. Bottom line is you need backups. You got to test the backups, test the people, test the process. Don't wait until a disaster happens, but everybody should know this uh, regardless of ransomware. And so some of the questions that might come up, I have a backup, it's in the cloud, so am I okay? Well, it's good to have the backup. And if it's in the cloud, the challenge you might have is, is something like credentials. If they're easily accessible or um, passwords are reused and the adversary gets access to it, they could log into your backup systems and delete the data. Um, and so in 2021, a cloud backup provider for a real estate industry was hit with ransomware. And as a result, the affected companies could not do closing in a hot housing market. So another question that comes up is, I, I back up on multiple media, so am I safe? Well, tapes and hard drives, as we know, fail. The nice thing about that is they're usually within your control as, as opposed to cloud that might add layers. Now, cloud, you could add multi-factor authentication and minimize your risk. Um, but the bottom line is, is you need to test, 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 and hope that the adversary has not found a way to bake in um, their um, compromise into your backups. Tabletop exercise right or table two exercise so working through mock scenarios test your people and process document the uh, uh the processes and then and hopefully build out playbooks uh from that identify the gaps in people process and technology and continue to improve on that and talos if you're not aware their incident response service offers this exercise the benefit here though is that Talos does this all the time. And so they know what works and what doesn't work and they can help you through this. Incident response. So we offer incident response and you can see multiple different services here. IR plans, IR playbooks, readiness assessments, tabletop exercises. You got compromise assessments, threat hunting, cyber range training, Intel on demand, and obviously emergency IR. Now, the benefit here is if you buy the IR service, there is the opportunity if you don't need it or some of the hours are left, you can use these and move them over to penetration testing or tabletop exercises. So that money could be reused. And if you're looking at things like pen testing and assessments, we've got the ability to do red team work that can help identify weaknesses before the, the threat is real or realized, right? Get ahead of the adversary. And Talos offers a, a variety of, of forms of red team services along with training and IR as mentioned. Adopting zero trust is also another uh, value add with mitigating uh, the, the overall risk to ransomware. Now, zero trust is a framework, it's not a product. And Cisco's been a leader in zero trust for a few years now. We look at it through these three W's, workforce, workload, and workplace. Workforce is ensuring the right users are, and the, the devices are secure when they're accessing applications, multi-factor authentications, posture assessments. You got workload where we're starting to look at um, the workloads in, in traditional data centers, containers, virtualization, cloud, and ensuring we understand the applications and processes and how they communicate and adding controls at the application and host level. And then workplace, we start getting into software-defined access, uh, having controls on VPN, wired and wireless, ensuring that any asset at any point in time is scrutinized before it access the network, including IoT. Now, if you've got your security hat on, you know, the three W's are great, but as a, uh, as a practitioner, I still don't trust the payload. So these are core tenets of zero trust, 
but there's complementary technologies on top of that. For example, is if you get connected on the uh, the, the network and you go through a um, a software defined access type approach. So you posture and scrutinize the asset, you let it on the network, it accesses the application, you ask for multi-factor authentication, another opportunity for um, uh, endpoint assessment, and then you access the workload. At any point in time, you're, you've got layers there, but the payload coming out of your system may be compromised. And if it is, you want to have an opportunity to uh, inspect that or the behavior of the network has changed and you want you certainly want to identify it. So there's certainly complementary technologies on top of the three W's. Now budgets, this one's interesting. We fight hard for this. Show me the money, right? We're constantly fighting for budget and justifying the need for the defensive capabilities and technologies required to defend the organization. And then a breach happens. Right, It happens and all of a sudden we get lots of money. This is a big problem, although valuable that we got the cash. The problem is, is every time I'm engaged in any of these types of scenarios, people panic and they start buying and they're not thinking about how they're going to integrate it, operate it, um, and the complexity and fragmentation. And do I actually increase the security effectiveness? Am I getting a checkbox or am I truly adding um, capabilities that are required? And then the data breach costs much more anyway than both of these combined. And so, you know, take this, uh, maybe share it with uh, leaders in your organization. But the goal here is, is that, listen, let's stop playing this game because eventually we're going to get popped and we're going to need to pay. And so we might as well pay up front and think of security like insurance. Ransomware defense. So we want to make sure that we're going to fight back and some of the ways of doing that is prevent ransomware from getting in. So at the network layer, there's lots of opportunities to gate uh, a ransomware from getting in. You want to stop it at the systems uh, if you have to and, and, and mitigate it from connecting to command and controls. Ultimately, you want to stop it before it gets to a system, but you need defensive capabilities there as well. You want to detect when it's present on the network. You want to work to contain it so it's not moving laterally within the organization. And then ultimately you need incident response if a breach does take place and then action against the findings. So if there's vulnerabilities within the organization, get them mitigated and uh, move the ball forward. And when we look at ransomware from a web or email, there's typically five steps. So user clicks on malvertising, right? Goes to malicious infrastructure, gets uh, an exploit kit, scans their box. Now, if I had vulnerabilities uh, patched and, and, and all up to date, then there's a good chance they can't get the, the exploit can't figure out or the exploit kit can't figure out what vulnerability because it doesn't exist. And so nothing more happens, right? We've mitigated it. Same thing with with command and control. If I get the payload and I get popped, it's got to go to CNC. If I can mitigate that call, I mitigated my risk. So I've got multiple opportunities here. I only need to be right in one of them. The adversary needs to be successful throughout. So most variants take this approach. So we have an opportunity to mitigate this. And how do we do this? Well, let's think about initial access, MITRE attack framework. So email phishing and attachments, compromised, or malicious websites, you got exposed vulnerable applications or service, removable media, stolen credentials, and the big one we've seen of late, supply chain attack. It gets a little bit more difficult, doesn't it? And so when you look at web and email threat model, we've got lots of different opportunities here to mitigate risk. So we have a remote user as an example. We've got endpoint protection, DNS, web security, MFA. You've got email, web gateways, firewalls. You've got network analytics. You've got this internal host and workload protection. So when we look at this, we go, okay, wait, initial access, spear phishing, right? So the tactic is initial access. The, the, the technique is, uh, is 1566 and the sub technique is 002, which happens to be a spear phishing link. And so um, if you look here, 002 could be mitigated on the endpoint. It could be mitigated at email. It could be mitigated at uh, web. It could be mitigated um, in uh, on the, the internal user as well. So lots of opportunity to mitigate it. Execution, again, you can see a similar pattern here, but execution is on the endpoint. And so you would typically see that, that control on the endpoint itself. Lateral movement, you can see networking components come in as well as endpoint credential access, 
So credential dumping is an example. Well, you can see workload protection, you've got endpoint protection, all helping mitigate that, that uh, potential threat. Discovery, again, multiple different opportunities here. Defense evasion, again, a core element of that would be endpoint protection. You got persistence, again, endpoint. Collection, screen capture as an example, you can see that, that we can mitigate there as well. So this gives you a good idea of how you can align MITRE and uh, start building out your mitigating controls to help mitigate that threat. So initial access, we've got things like um, exploit protection. So M1050, you can see it on the endpoints. You can see restricted web-based content, so 1021. You can see that in multiple different places. Execution, lateral movement, credential access, defense evasion, and persistence. So again, you can see network segmentation. You can see multi-factor authentication. So a couple of opportunities here to help mitigate risk. And again, this is an example of some of the uh, alignment between MITRE attack framework and some of the Cisco security te technologies to help mitigate specifically against ransomware. Cisco's ransomware defense package. Check this out. Cisco umbrella, block, request to malicious sources, asymmetric encryptions, you've got secure access services edge. In fact, umbrella does a lot of things. You've got a blocking DNS, you've got web proxy, cloud delivered firewall, IPS, you've got remote browser isolation, you've got cloud access security broker, all delivered and driven out of the cloud. Secure email, blocked phishing and email threats coming in. You've got secure workload to help identify and remediate malicious files, artifacts, micro segmentation or application segmentation. You've got Cisco Endpoint that identify and remediate malicious files, artifacts. You've got endpoint de de uh, detection response. You've got orbital, the ability to query systems and look for artifacts that might suggest something is happening in the organization. You've got Cisco Secure Analytics that does network anomaly and breach detection and encrypted traffic analytics on top of that to help discover things like CNC channels or um, um, maybe um, data exfiltration. So other signs that might uh, indicate something's going on. You got Cisco secure firewall and secure access. So you got segmentation, visibility and security defense. You got malware and URL and, and IPS capabilities here as well. Cisco Duo, you got multi-factor authentication and endpoint assessment. Um, and then finally, SecureX to help tie a lot of this mess together. When I say mess, I'm not talking about the technologies. I'm talking about the complexity. You've got a lot of different capabilities, Cisco and third party. And SecureX is going to bridge the gap and turn all of those independent systems into a, an ecosystem to pull from and be able to look at data from a relations graph perspective and, and understanding how did IPS see it versus email versus the endpoint and where did it move and who did it talk to, what domain, what URL, what SHA. Threat hunting, orchestration, and event management. The other one is Security Blueprint. Now this is a great resource. You can go here for free, put in your information, and it'll spit out um, and let you know how you fare at endpoint access control, breach defense, gateway defense, and security operations. So check that out. SecureX, as I mentioned, is meant to centralize your dashboards across both Cisco and third party. It's meant for SecOps, IT ops, NetOps, DevOps, DevSecOps, all can leverage this tool. You have the ability to orchestrate, automate, and build playbooks. So based on an activity, do X, Y, and Z. And what's really cool is it's included at no cost with any Cisco Secure solution that uses Talos Intelligence. Before we close this out, let's check out the blueprint. So I took 10 minutes, I went through the questionnaire. This is endpoint and branch network. We see secure, at risk, and not secure. Look at my endpoint. After I answer those questions, I've got a clear visual of what I need in order to mitigate my risk. Breach defense, access control. I got a little bit of green and orange, but it's still a lot of red. Gateway defense, I can use some help here. And then security operations is lacking. So I know what I need. I've got a recipe. Data center and cloud, there's my workload capabilities. Email security, I'm rocking. Look at the defensive capabilities in play. You've got cloud services, access control, and data center edge. Need some work there. 
SOC capabilities. Secure Access Services Edge, we can see the security as a service is definitely a gap. Network as a service, we've got some elements there and that we could actually pivot on that and, and strengthen our capabilities here. And then SOC capabilities again are, are lacking. And then finally, zero trust. How do we sit? So we've got workforce. We see secure email. We've got some anti-malware and MFA, but we've got some gaps. Access control. So now workplace. And we're hit with more gaps. And then we've got breach defense. And then we move into workload. And you can see, again, we've got some work to do to shore up our capabilities. But this is a quick way to get some great insight in how you are positioned when it comes to security. Oh, 25 minutes, that's all I had. So assess your security capabilities. Go to ciscosecurityblueprint.com. Try out our ransomware defense solution at dcloud.cisco.com. See ransomware defense in action via our attack and defense lab. These are all awesome stuff. So check it out. You'll learn a ton. Even if you're not going to buy anything from Cisco, go check it out. Have a look. See the capabilities. And I bet money you will be interested in, in some of the capabilities that you discover. And then ultimately, there's a ransomware defense um, link that you can go to to learn more about it. Protecting against cyber threats. It's a game of cat and mouse. And you either adapt or suffer a compromise. And that costs money, damages brand integrity, and creates operational chaos. But how do you choose from the hundreds of tools and options on the market? At Cisco, the industry leader in security, we're here to help. Available free of charge, our Cisco Security Blueprint enables you to get a personalized and unprecedented health check of your current security capabilities. A check that's measured against industry best practices. You won't find anything else like it on the market. With a vendor agnostic approach, our Blueprint considers your physical, virtual, and cloud environments. The result is a customized analysis of your security defenses that enables you to plan your cyber defense strategy. And what do you need to do? It's simple. Complete the short survey, meet with your trusted Cisco advisor, then review your Cisco security blueprint. And as your trusted partner, we'll be there to help every step of the way.